So it's time to welcome our special guest. Oh, yes. I'm so There's excited. A There's a mouse in the house. <laughs> there is. Shh, shh. Okay, let's announce. Let's reveal the mouse. Go for it. Do, do, do. <laughs> Drum roll emojis. Okay. A conversation with our special guest, mm -hmm. Mark Lesser. So Mark is an experienced specialist in the fields of education, technology, and youth development. And he has amazing experience designing programming and learning spaces in local and national learning contexts. He directs the design and development of web-based and live learning environments for mouses. So have you guys heard of mouse? Just mouse. Just mouse. Not mouses. For mouse's national program network. Oh, mouses, yes. Yes, yes. His experience designing learning environments is shaped by previous roles as an educator, trainer, and specialist in the area of arts, media, and technology education. Mark holds a master's degree from NYU's Digital Media Design for Learning program, is the co-founder of Emoticon, New York's Youth Digital Media and Technology Festival, and in 2012 was named a National School Boards Association 20 to Watch. So we're so excited to have we're Mark so here. excited. Yay. It's so wonderful. Hey, Mark. Mark. Guys, how are you? I missed my cue. Sorry. <gasps> Hello. There you are. Hey, how are you? Oh, hey, Mark. Oh, hang on one second. We got to... One moment, because I need to close that. Okay, and we're back. All right, hey Mark, how's it going? I'm, I'm doing great. Doing great. You guys are the <laughs> so tell us about this mouse. Uh, we we are first of all really psyched to be a part of uh, this and uh, your community. And uh, I, I wish I knew that costumes were included uh, or welcomed because <laughs> we could have uh, uh, made that happen. So um, Mouse is uh, 20 years old this year. We are uh, really New York's kind of pioneer in the nonprofit space, thinking about technology and learning and particularly thinking about uh, how equity plays into technology and learning and uh, as, you guys are doing such an amazing job thinking about how we get um, objects, you know, objects that illustrate how creativity is technology and how technology are uh, thinking tools above all. Um, Mouse has been working really hard for 20 years trying to figure out how we make sure that uh, every young person, uh, regardless of uh, what neighborhood he's in, what budget his family has, uh, has the access he needs to uh, or she needs to participate in solving the problems of their community and, and locally and globally. Um, and so uh, are we sort of believe in technology with purpose and making sure that um, kind of gone are the days of ed tech where uh, we sit young people in front of computers as uh, either a test taking device or a productivity device and we start thinking about how we make young people as um, as good with uh, the tools of, of technology as they are with scissors and glue sticks and, uh, and masking tape. So that's what we do. Uh, we were founded here in New York, but we are now a national uh, support organization for about uh, 300 schools a year. Um, and we are just jazzed to be here and uh, also uh, incredibly grateful for the community that uh, that supports us in uh, helping to just bring a sort of new chapter for STEM learning out to uh, schools and after school programs nationally. Awesome. Great. So around the theme of equity and access, you've done a lot of work around digital badging. Can you talk more about that and why it's important? It's really interesting to think about badging as a new form of citizenship and belonging. Yeah, absolutely. So there, there are a bunch of reasons why this is really, really important. And I think uh, for the educators and parents uh, in your community, uh, two things usually come to mind when they hear badging. One is um, Scout um, and a great model over time of how we can use a sort of extrinsic motivation uh, to help young people feel official when they uh, build a skill like making fire or doing something for their community. 
Um, and at its at its core, there's something there um, that uh, carries through with with digital badges and why it's important to equity. Um, what's what's most important to think about is that when we think about the some of the major problems in uh, modern education, um, we realize that so much can be supported when we realize new ways of thinking about um, a, a, a paradigm shift around assessment and test taking uh, and making sure that young people who are learning amazing things uh, in school and out of school that don't necessarily um, translate well at a in a bubble test um, get conveyed when they go to apply to college right so um, so a young person who comes to me from the South Bronx and has put together an amazing portfolio of uh, design and technology work. They uh, created a prototype for an assistive technology for um, someone in their community or they are working on an air quality sensor. Um, many of them don't realize that these are things that are relevant to the pathway that fall, that uh, comes um, comes next and and how relevant it is to people like admissions counselors and uh, you know and their teachers and people that are really important to their their future steps so why badging is so critical to equity is that um, we have a major discrepancy between uh, what especially in higher education the wishes of uh, higher ed to support diversity in the fields of, especially for us, technology, engineering, and design. Um, they all have a, a common purpose in wanting to support that, but they have little, very little infrastructure to help see it realized. Uh, you have industry who also wants to see that diversity come to life and, and make sure that everyone gets a chance to participate. Um, and uh, in order to do that, we need to figure out ways uh, that programs like Mouse or communities like Little Bits um, get recognized in the portfolio of students' work who are applying to places uh, here in New York like Parsons School of Design or, or Pratt or Fashion Institute um, are recognized and realized even when they don't, they aren't coming from sort of uh, pedigree schools where they have uh, the luxury of taking four years of studio art and all of the math courses required for an engineering degree uh, or, or uh, prerequisites for an engineering degree. So uh, badges are important because as a community we can come together and we can figure out ways to assess young people and make sure they have credentials that are presentable to higher education and to employers that better represent uh, what skills they're looking for. Uh, I have hardly talked, and in fact, I've never talked uh, to the head of a tech uh, company of any size and asked them, um, ask them, what do you hire for? Uh, and they say, great SAT scores. Mm -hmm. Or, um, you know, stellar, stellar uh, marks from their middle school report card. What they want to know is, Tell me about projects they've worked on. How well do they work with others? How well do they uh, switch from one project to another? Um, how well do they know about how important documentation is? All of these things that end up giving us a chance to create really rich evidence in a digital badge. And I think uh, the most important thing that um, the discrepancy between sort of scouts type badges and, and the new model of digital badging is that um, instead of these being a sort of embroidered patch that you put on a, a sash, uh, imagine the amount of data that a young person can uh, store in their entire K-12 experience as they're trying to think about what identity they want to put forward to an admissions counselor. Think about the amount of data that they can store behind a badge that, you know, say uh, Mouse has badges and things like iteration. Uh, if they want to prove to uh, somebody at Parsons, for example, that they know what that looks like and they know uh, how to describe a project in its various stages, um, think about how much data they can be taking on 
uh, to, in order to describe what they're really capable of. And uh, so those are some of the reasons we think it's so important. And uh, we do think it's a matter of uh, equity because the more uh, we level the playing field of how people demonstrate skills beyond um, test taking, um, the better off we all are. Fantastic. Badges is like the new AP. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Very cool. Um, let's see, what do I want to, where do I want to read next? And also, for those of you out there, please put your questions in the, uh, in the chat so we can ask those to Mark in a bit. Um, so I guess I would like to know, um, so we mentioned Emoticon earlier, mm -hmm. which is uh, in your bio, which is an event in New York that is a youth-led digital media conference. Um, I would love to hear a little bit more about that and also what advice you would give to anybody who wanted to start something like that in their own city. Yeah, with an emphasis on youth, yeah. youth voices and, youth and youth leadership. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, so uh, there's this, this great quote from uh, uh, a tremendous um, pioneer educator, uh, Marion Wright Edelman, who started the Children's Defense Fund, who, who uh, said at one point, you can't be what you can't see. Um, and when we're thinking about the issues of equity in, uh, particularly in STEM, uh, which is science, technology, engineering, and math for the part members of the community where jargon is not, or that K-12 jargon is not your thing. Um, and so, so that quote from Marion Wright Edelman is so important because as uh, a young educator sort of reversing the landscape of what was happening in New York especially, but it happens in cities uh, all over the country, um, you see what a project fair looks like at the middle or high school level, and then you go to a place like NYU's uh, Interactive Telecommunications Program or Parsons d &T, you go to a Playtech Saturday, and you see what the disparity is between what we're calling uh, a technology project or, a, or an innovation project at the 10th grade level and what we're calling an innovation project uh, in undergraduate or graduate school and you realize that there is a gap there that is very hard to close. Um, and, and so there's two reasons that emoticon is so important. One is that um, young people need to uh, need an occasion like graduate students at NYU uh, to see what peers are up to, to meet um, peers who have common interests um, like them, to uh, sort of define innovation as a community uh, and to get some exposure to professionals in the field who are actually doing this work. Uh, the young, most of the young people who are coming to Emoticon uh, don't have uncles and, and siblings and, and or a parent who are software engineers or, um, you know, um, Imagineering at Disney or doing uh, things like that. And, and we don't realize at a young age how critical it is that those people are a part of uh, the sort of scenery around us as we're developing. Um, and so, so there are two things that are really important here. One is that young people have a community and voice in what it looks like to be a, an innovator and uh, engineer design thinker in their own city. Um, that can't be something that gets defined by the industry around them without their voice being included. Um, and then number two, they need exposure to the field at a very young age because uh, if they can't, if they can't see it, it's very hard to be it. Um, there's uh, once in a while you have the wonderful case where a young person meets a mentor uh, on on the off chance that they're part of that kind of uh, setting, or a mentoring program, or or they get caught into something at school. Um, but it it's not enough. Uh, we need to make sure that every young person has the same opportunity uh, if we really intend to continue a tradition in the U.S. of, uh, of supporting the creative potential of every citizen and making sure that they have a part in, uh, in, in solving challenges in the creative economy uh, and all those good things. So um, how I want to see, I wish for Emoticon or events like it, 
so this is a, a day-long conference for young people to come out. Uh, they show off their work. If you've ever been to um, uh, an ITP Spring Show or uh, uh, they have similar programs in Chicago in the Bay Area, uh, D School at Stanford does a similar one. Uh, it's a fair. It's an opportunity for young people to put out their work, uh, get feedback, uh, have their voice be heard on issues that relate to the intersection of technology and uh, social impact. Um, it's all of these things, and, and it is so critical to young people feeling like they have a community and have uh, a voice in what's happening. Um, how other cities can do it, we have a sort of open blueprint for Emoticon. We absolutely uh, invite new affiliates. If you are a, a PTA, a nonprofit in another city, if you are um, a bunch of individuals, maybe you work in, uh, you're a, a bunch of software developers in Chicago who feel like you could throw this thing and have it be successful. We have an open blueprint. We welcome people using the branding. Uh, and and I would love to have you um, get in touch. I, uh, I will put up contact info for me at some point if you guys haven't already. Yeah, so awesome. we'll definitely Thank share. You, yeah. I love how you're thinking because you're really like you're re-engineering the major gateways. First talked about the admissions process, yeah. now career fairs. Like we have to reinvent all these major gateways to yeah. life pathways yeah. to really unlock people. Yeah. So it's like you're redesigning society. <laughs> right. That's that's the goal anyway. Is that in your bio? We should add that to your bio. Yeah, redesign. Yeah. For the next, we need, we need everybody, everybody on this, uh, on this session, or who views it afterward, to join us because uh, none of us is going to do it alone. It's true. It takes a village. Cool. Questions? Yeah. questions? So let's see. We have one question so far. Um, so specifically, can you talk a little bit more about what badges are and what they might look like and how people use them? Uh, so a badge is a digital file the same way that a, a, a dot .pdf, .png, um, etc. are. Uh, the difference is that uh, there are a group of developers who are working on a standard, the way we have an email standard, uh, for setting up that file in such a way that it represents data um, that a student can put together in all kinds of uh, different ways. Um, so think of a badge in digital terms as an icon. Um, and imagine your, for example, your college diploma being a digital icon that somebody can click on and actually not only view your transcripts, but view um, the watercolors that uh, were part of your uh, senior thesis and um, you know a business model you put together uh, all of the things that tie directly to the competency so if a badge good badges are competency driven so they have a, a sort of goal there in mind and then tie uh, data that works as evidence to the competency so it's showing you not only am I telling you the way we do in a resume uh, that I work well with people but I can actually point you to a badge that I've earned um, that has within it comments from 150 of my coworkers who will tell you the same thing and, and can describe stories where uh, I have worked well with other people. Um, so, um, you know, um, imagine this in the context of things like the trades, where uh, in a lot of cases certification happens uh, after you've taken a test. But I'm not interested really in hiring a plumber who's super book smart. I'm interested in hiring a plumber uh, who can demonstrate to me that they're super, uh, A, they know the standards, but B, they also are super innovative and thinking about new materials and thinking about uh, how the entire house works uh, as a system, et cetera. These are things that are way better described with, uh, uh, with real data, you know, images, video, uh, them even narrating. Uh, there are all kinds of ways that, that we can imagine. Uh, I think, you know, in, in the chat for this, uh, that you, if we did a 30-second brainstorm, this group could come up with a hundred different ways 
uh, that work better than tests uh, for describing skills. And it's not to say that tests are useless, and I don't, I don't uh, knock on educators who use them because they serve a, a purpose. But every great educator that I know also knows that they are good for a certain thing and that we have miles to go before we realize um, realize our ideals around what assessment can look like and uh, digital credentials, I think, uh, are, are going to help us take a step in that direction. They're not a, a panacea by any means, um, but I think they're, they're incremental progress, which is what we need right now. They're like 3D real-time grades. <laughs> Yeah. That's um, it. I mean, imagine, imagine if you had uh, the amount of information. So if I start a website on WordPress right now and I hook it up to Google Analytics, um, I have more information about that site in about a day than I've had, than I have from looking at somebody's resume that represents 20 years of their life, right? So, um, Imagine if we could be harnessing technology to do the kinds of things uh, that we're already doing, but but really apply it to, to uh, education in this country. Uh, it would mean a paradigm shift, and uh, we need nothing short of uh, that kind of change. Awesome. Yeah. More questions, huh? Oh, yes. All mm -hmm. the things. Um, let's see. Uh, we'll do one more question. So there, there's some chat around um, how to start implementing similar communities in other places, um, in other countries, in other cities. Um, where do you begin? Um, and especially thinking about the challenge of incorporating voices from multiple communities mm -hmm. and ensuring that there is that diversity mm -hmm. there. Yeah. So ask it one more time, sorry. Right. It's, kind of, it's actually a little bit of a combination between two. So what advice would you have for people who want to start implementing similar communities um, in other cities besides New York and even outside of the U.S.? Yeah. Um, where would you start? Um, I, I'm not sure if they mean similar communities to uh, – what's happening in New York more broadly or similar communities to Little Bits' this community. Um, so I'm not sure, but I, I'll say some things and uh, see how it goes. Um, I think that one of the things that we have an opportunity to do right now, um, more than ever before potentially, is I think that parents have a lot more leverage than they used to and uh, need to work up the confidence to uh, become a, a part of the sort of new age of education um, period. And so I would start with the people who are most invested, who are the parents and guardians in communities uh, who, who know that there are gaps and things that their young people are missing and are more than willing to step up things like uh, coordinate or at very least show up and be be part of something uh, you know help run an event that introduces um, you know software engineers to young people or you know uh, fill in fill in the blank so I think that um, we need to start thinking about engaging not only engaging parents which is what the institution of k-12 has done with mixed success for a hundred years um, but for parents to start engaging K-12 and um, really think about what they want to lead to contribute to all this. So parents are huge. I think um, doing a, 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 a little bit of mapping of your geography and thinking about what are your resources um, who are going to have a stake in this. For the higher education, there are folks in higher ed who want to talk to you about this and want to figure out how to bring their resources forward. Um, even if it's not scholarships, they have something to contribute. Um, who are the educators and making sure that you're, you're getting into school and figuring out what meetings you can attach yourself to that where this kind of conversation should already be happening. When we ask for educators to um, extend their hours and try to have these conversations beyond uh, the, the already very taxed schedules that they have, uh, it becomes hard, but schools all have a venue for parents to get their voices heard. Um, some should start there. 
Um, and then we need to make sure that private industry is involved in creating an ecosystem that, that sort of raises all ships and make sure that all young people are getting, uh, you know, it doesn't need to be the very same exposure from geography to geography. There's something magical to some part of education being very local. Um, if, if you have great resources in engineering and manufacturing where you live, um, go find those professionals who are also invested in young people and figure out what they can contribute um, and start there. Don't start with, with sort of boiling the ocean and trying to go further than is feasible. Do one thing that's very practical and see it succeed uh, and then go from there. And then um, the other thing that I would encourage is uh, there are a lot of folks who work at the sort of intersection of um, innovation and, and business who talk about, um, designers talk about this all the time, that uh, if we think about the customer or the user who are at the two extremes, so the, the Uber user who is kind of always gonna show up and then the user who we really can't get through the doors, so uh, in the context of education, think about the super motivated young person who is into every extracurricular, and then think about the young person who we just can't motivate to get off the couch for lots of different reasons. They might not have a guardian to get them places. Uh, they may have learning disabilities. There may be so many different variables going on. But if we think about those two extremes and create one practical thing that touches both of those extremes, then you solve a lot for the middle. And, um, and I think people make the mistake of sort of taking the lowest hanging fruit, which is the most engaged kids. Um, but uh, I, I think instead, if you can figure out something that works for them and the, uh, the other end of the spectrum, I think we figure out a lot for the kids in the middle and, um, and you know, but it needs to be practical and you need to be able to replicate it. Uh, it can't be, you know, a uh, your your the the bar mitzvah wedding uh, mega event of all mega events uh, in your first go. It can be somebody with a clean garage who wants to throw out a bunch of folding tables uh, and a bunch of uh, um, you know a bunch of LEDs and and breadboards. You know, these are materials that you can now get for under twenty dollars. Uh, for a group of five kids and start, just get started. I think people make the mistake of thinking that uh, the innovation space and STEM learning is an expensive endeavor, that it has to be hundreds of dollars and a robotics club, which are wonderful things, but uh, don't always reach everybody. Um, go to your local electronics shop, hardware stores sometimes carry stuff, uh, uh, Adafruit, SparkFun, um, all of these places now, Amazon, where you can get lots of materials for very little money and get started in a clean garage and don't feel like it needs to be everything. The last thing I'll say is uh, too many people who say they want to help us out um, say, uh, but I'm not an educator, you know, I'm not trained. Um, I'm not a teacher. And the, the new wave of pedagogy uh, embraces the fact that we learn alongside our learners all the time. So one of the greatest things, and I do this with my own kids, that, that you can say to a young person when they ask you a question is, I don't know, and then follow it up with how you would find the answer. Um, and that is going to be far more empowering than if you answer it flat out, um, you know, Always. So don't be afraid uh, to learn alongside these young people. I do it all the time with my own kids. And um, and it's really important to them see me uh, fail, but not fail in such a way that I quit. I fail forward and I think about, uh, okay, you know, how do I do it again uh, in a more successful way? Awesome. Yes. Awesome. All that. Great. So with that, let's break out into our chat groups. Yeah. Thank you so and much. Mark, thank you so, so much for being with us today and for uh, 
uh, gracefully <laughs> sticking, uh, through, sticking our, through our, our, little, our technical, our, our spell mishaps. Wizardry. Oh my goodness. It happens. You know, with magic, you, you kind of never know what's going to happen. Uh, but it has been, it's an absolute pleasure. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, little bits should be on everybody's mind as a creativity tool. Uh, and, and go, go make stuff and, and fail lots. Um, thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. Cool. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thanks, Mark. Bye guys.